You're still watching Waze. Regulation exists to protect workers, public safety, businesses and investments. But inefficient or inadequate regulation can stifle entrepreneurial activity and business growth and impact the ease of doing business. Olago Kebalogun is the CEO of SoFresh, Nigeria's pioneer and fastest growing healthy food chain. He's committed to inspiring Nigerians to adopt a healthy lifestyle and create healthier eating habits. He's extremely passionate about building sustainable organizations that will outlive generations on sound business principles. Remember, you can join the conversation. Tweet to us at Plus TV Africa or at Waze Show Africa One with the hashtag Waze or SMS 0818 038 4663. Thanks for joining us, Alagoki. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Nice to see you. So, I, I, I so fresh. <laughs> we were just talking before uh, we went live. Amazing brand. I we're we're day one yeah. followers. We We've, know you before we knew you. You Thank know, you. we met your salads before we met you. Thank you. Um, I guess that was the most exciting thing for me. Yeah. <laughs> and your strategy on social media, but uh, you know, I won't I won't divert into that because that was amazing for a, a Nigerian business coming onto the scene. But if we look at the topic today in terms of government policies, do you think that the policies the government implements in Nigeria truly supports the SME? Um, so Sometimes it could get really confusing. Um, some of the policies that you know come come up you know in relation to SMEs. Um, so, for example, I look at the recent um, forex restriction on milk. It had a lot of impact on our business, for example, and it's kind of confusing what they're trying to do sometimes, um, because um, then the reason advanced for that was to spoil local production, but there was not there was not any investment or a clear you know plan of how would you spur um, growth in the milk production industry? And then you, it was, now it's like solving a problem that never existed. So you created that problem by restricting Forex. And then six months after, you now selected six firms to import, um, to import um, yeah. milk. Dairy milk. products. Mm -hmm. Dairy products. Now there's going to be uh, probably scarcity. There's going to be a disadvantage for the people that don't have access to Forex. So, it, it really gets confusing at times, um, some of the policies. I know the government tries to do its best, but it honestly appears sometimes that there is not an holistic, you know, thought through process on Absolutely. what the plan yeah. is. And so it has a negative impact on SMEs. Can so how has it affected I mean, So for example, business? it's a direct influence on, so we're using, yogurt is one of our biggest products. And then once there was restriction on Forex for importation of milk, the prices of milk spiked up, prices of our raw materials spiked up. And the same thing with the border control. You had a jump of sometimes 100% wow. on products. Mm -hmm. Products such as pineapples, like chicken, yeah. um, it really got um, bad. So um, there's a lot of negative impact sometimes on, on SMEs with some of the policies that are made. Do you think SMEs will be able to actually address these issues and rise above the challenges? I mean, so that's what we do every day. Um, but sometimes it's like mm -hmm. knocking your head against the wall because um, so you have, for SMEs, you have like lower bargaining power. And for me, I believe one of the ways, you know, the Nigerian government needs to support the economy is to focus on the SMEs. Mm -hmm. So I, I look at the situation we, ha we have in the country and I think three things are very important for us to, to, to focus on. One, we need to find a way to create jobs. It's almost turning into an epidemic. I'm turning out graduates um, with no job. So we need to fast, fa you know, find a way to really create jobs as soon as possible. The second thing we need to do is to increase productivity. So I hear things like we need to go back to the farm, we need to go back to the farm. It's fine. But then we need to invest in productivity. Okay, okay. We can't be farming the same way we were doing in 1982, exactly. 2020. And then, you know, the, the third thing I think the government needs to focus on is education. Um, we, we seem to be going behind at a very fast rate. So I have a cousin in the US, he's a teacher, he's a math teacher, and he tells me he teaches math and robotics to children between the age of five and 14. He shows me a project 14, project 14 years old did. Mm. They actually wrote codes mm. and mm -hmm. built those robots from the beginning and they were functional. Mm. And then I come back and look at what our 14 year old, 15 year old and is doing in Nigeria it. and it's so you know, wide apart. Um, so so I, I think very quickly we need to address, you know, address these issues. 
And I feel there's a lot of power and influence that the SMEs have. I kind of feel there should be policies directly targeted at SMEs to help them grow. So you have SoFresh, for example, over the last 10 years, we have 10 outlets, we have, under, we have created over 150 direct jobs, like 315 direct yeah, jobs. Yeah. What I expect government to be doing, for example, is to be asking SMEs like us that have done it for the last five years. There's consistency, okay. there is you know, growth trajectory, and you can see that this business is profitable. How can we partner with you? If you have created 100, what do you need to create 200? What do you need to create 500? Yeah. Not trying to that, stifle. That experience. Yeah, yeah, not trying to stifle. Okay, go, go, okay, I agree with you. And even at that, the SME still mm. employ about 85% of the workforce. Exactly. Now, we have moved 15 places. For the ease of doing business, we've moved 15 places. We're now 131. But how effective is that? When you bring it home, does that jump? you know, by 15 places upward, does it reflect on the society? So I'm, I'm glad you said you had 15 outlets. How, ten. sorry, 10, maybe I'm prophesying five more. <laughs> <laughs> how easy was it opening those outlets? And in the future, how easy will it be? To open five more. Five more. We are definitely going to open five more. It's very tough, um, but that's what, you know, we do as entrepreneurs is to look at the opportunities and take advantage of them. Um, when I hear about the ease of doing business, I, I'll be very frank. Um, I've not seen any impact on my business, so oh. I'm going to be very personal here. Um, so you do things like you know business registration, like granting easy access for foreigners to enter a country, like visa. Mm -hmm. Some of those things are peripheral things. Wow. The, the the real day-to-day -day ease of doing business, I have not felt it in my business. Um, infrastructure is 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 killing. I mean, so for every store we open. We have to do power, water, and drinkable water, great facility mm -hmm. for every outlet, provide security. And these are things we battle with every single yeah. day. Um, for example, in Lagos State, I probably have around 12 agencies on my neck, you know, different law, my last man, all of them mm -hmm. coming in, requesting for dues. Um, so I have not even felt that. So even, for example, if Lagos State is going to collect 20 dues, why don't you bundle it into one? Because one comes today, Another one comes tomorrow. tomorrow. Sometimes you're so focused on <coughs> doing every other thing aside from running the primary, primary business. business. Mm -hmm. Because um, you have to money stick over that. I mean, the move is very commendable, but for me as an SM in Nigeria, it's I've not, not felt real. a difference mm. to real. where I was three years ago. And so is that, okay, go ahead. So is there a platform where the government actually interacts with a cluster of SMEs and probably call people like you to come on board to lay their grievances? Is there a platform like that? I'm not sure. I, I know there is, um, so the, I know that Payback has a, like a website you can drop like um, feedbacks and um, challenges and all of that. I don't know how, how effective that is. I know from time to time people- Is it, you don't know how effective it is or you don't feel the effect of it? So I don't feel the effect of it. Okay. Um, I know people, mm -hmm. I even know mm -hmm. people that are on, 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 the, on the payback um, committee. Mm -hmm. I don't know how effective that is. That is. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, you basically, it's just people work. Yeah. If you're not feeling it. I think there's a lot of people. I, I think the movement is a lot of people work, which is still, I mean, which is still commendable. We want to bring in a lot of investment from outside the country. So facilitating ease of access into the country is very commendable. But then we also need to sit down and do the real work. Partner, I mean, there's nothing wrong if the government sits down and look at SMEs that have had growth, you know, traction over the last the five last years, years, and asking specific questions: mm. How can we help you grow? grow? So imagine a company like SoFresh, like I said, created 150 jobs, hmm. direct over 315 direct with the plumbers, electricians, suppliers, vendors, yeah. suppliers, and I'm still struggling to access a loan from from BOI because Long. I need to provide a landed yeah. property. Yeah. Now I have assets that are not landed property across my 10 you stores, that is in millions, hundreds yes. of millions, but they wouldn't accept that. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I've run business for 10 years, I'm creating value every day, there should be some form of concession mm -hmm. for those kind of companies to be able to access you know, and, and grow the business. So these are the kind of expectations I have of government to look at such businesses like I said, critically, we have to create jobs. Mm. So the question they should be asking this kind of SME is, what do you need to go from 10 to, to 20, from 50 to 100, from 500 to 1,000? 
we need to get this economy moving. So once we even look at the fact that the SME is the answer to turning the economy mm -hmm. around, and I think everybody agrees that data everybody, shows yeah. that. Exactly. Everybody, you know, agrees. everybody agrees that that is the case. Do you feel that, because um, you talked about something when you talked about the milk uh, ban and the fact that six companies were identified, and these are not SMEs, these yeah, are no, multi, yeah, no. you know. So do you feel that government policies today are actually favoring the larger companies? I think so, because what, what they're effectively creating is a cabal. Because now you give Autonomy. you give preference to these six companies. There are other importers. These guys now import at a lower cost compared to other people importing. What happens? They control the market. They, they control yeah. the market. They are the disadvantage. So mm -hmm. a number of things can happen. These other guys that don't have access to the you know um, the forex, the, 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 the forex will probably look for cheaper quality milk to bring in, so that at least they can compete on price. And so, you know, um, I think there's a lot of focus because they have a lot of bargaining power, you know, with the government. They have a lot of influence with the government. But I think there needs to be a deliberate effort to see how can we spur, you know, growth for SMEs and increase productivity. We need to increase productivity because we need to be able to do 10 with 1, not doing 1 with, with not 10. doing yeah. 2 yeah. with 1. Yeah. That is where we're going to. You have places like South Africa that, you know, a plot of land produces rice like nine times what Nigeria, Nigeria produces. Is. This is part of what we should be focusing on. Okay, okay. Let me just interrupt you a bit. So, I just want you to give us an idea of the effect of poor infrastructure. What is the contribution of power? What what does it? What's the contribution to your operating cost? So, for example, my energy cost last year was up to seventeen percent. Wow. Of you know of of um, expenditure which is a lot so and then aside from the the actual you know money you spend on you know power is the attention and destruction that it causes so sometimes you have my outlets they're out of power yeah. and then the generator is down the, sp the spare generator is down there's no power i already have orders and then i'm running from pillar to post you know customers are not happy i am not happy and then that whole day Productivity is at zero because everything I'm doing is getting that power back on. So there's a lot of destruction. It even it, it, it creates lack of focus sometimes for the business because then I have to be focusing on these other More things rather than things optimizing, rather than strategically optimizing, optimizing your business. Exactly. So in fact, you know, when you say you focus on having uh, companies outlast generations, mm -hmm. these are some of the things the I'm issues. sure that impacts that ability because you can't plan for the future when you're planning you and running around to sort out to um, today. I think um, you've shared with us some, some very key issues, and I think you've also touched on the points where the government needs to focus in terms of employment, in terms of really developing mechanized farming. If we're mm. going to move into agriculture as a real source, then we really, really need to look at it Absolutely. Um, as, a, as a result. But it was lovely to have you on the show. Thank you Absolutely. so much. Absolutely. We're looking forward to five more, five <laughs> five more, more so fresh. Yeah, yes. definitely. Oh. More than five. Uh, <laughs> yes. Expect so fresh everywhere within you. Our focus is to be able to increase the ease of access to fresh and healthy foods. And um, despite these challenges, I mean, the opportunities are there. It is amazing for SMEs um, because the problems are also so many. So it's an opportunity for people that, you know, want to start and run businesses. But I think government needs to also be deliberate about facilitating uh -huh. and helping us grow. Excellent. Thank you. So I think we have a, a couple of messages. Uh, let's see. OK. We'll probably have to take those um, after the break. Okay, thank you so much. Helen Amore joins us right after the break.